This is the story of a cat named Garfield. Garfield lost his home to the housing crisis and lives as a homeless cat with his friends, who are also homeless. They spend their days looking at the sky and cuddling for warmth in an unforgiving world where rent is unaffordable. One day, Garfield and his friends decided to leave their temporary home and go look for a better future. Their journey looked promising until the cats attempted to cross a large gap in the path forward. When it was Garfield's turn to jump, his weight caused the pipe to bend, dropping him down into the void. During his final moments, he looked up at his friends, who were judging Garfield for being overweight. Once Garfield could not hold on for dear life, he falls down into nothingness while letting out a defeated scream. Miraculously, Garfield survived the fall with only a broken leg. Realizing that he is unable to continue his journey due to his injury, Garfield accepts death and just decides to fall asleep and accept whatever fate has in store for him. However, Garfield remembered that he forgot to turn off the oven back home and had no choice but to find a way back. During his search for a way back, Garfield came across something intriguing. Even in the darkest pits of hell, there is a camera staring at you making sure you aren't doing something that would be harmful to your social credit score. Continuing his journey, Garfield comes across a nine monitor setup left behind by an ominous entity. Choosing to trust the message follow me appearing on the screen, Garfield keeps going until he comes to a set of paint canisters. For no reason whatsoever, Garfield felt that he needed to push these containers over the edge making them possibly fall on an unsuspecting passerby. But Garfield does not care for the safety of others, do you hear the funny noise the paintings make when they touch the ground? So exhilarating. In addition to being a danger to society, Garfield now engages in acts of vandalism, spreading paint all over someone's living quarters and breaking a window. Truly despicable. Coming to a street filled with strange inhabitants, Garfield became scared, for he had forgotten about the controversial opinion he posted on social media many years ago. This opinion angered the strange creatures and they decided to choose violence. Fortunately for Garfield, the strange creatures were not as accustomed to running as he was, allowing him to escape. After such a stressful encounter, Garfield fortunately found a gaming setup in a vacant apartment. So naturally, he booted up Garfield Kart Racing, the greatest game ever made, and spent a good 10 hours playing it until he became hungry and went looking for food. Garfield did not find food, but he did find a mini-computer called John. Garfield rushed over to install Doom on it. Shockingly, John's hard drive contained a sentient artificial intelligence that now also runs Doom. Unfortunately, John's battery was purchased from a dollar store and would not last very long. If Garfield wanted to play Doom on the go, he would have to wear a portable power bank on his back. The power bank itself was heavy, but all those years of deadlifting made Garfield incredibly sore. With the new equipment acquired, the pair head off to seek freedom. They arrive at a town that is discriminatory against orange cats. This upsets Garfield and he goes to speak to the manager. The town apologizes to Garfield in fear of getting cancelled. Having settled that matter, Garfield goes on a tour of the town. First he went and terrorized this person. Then he went to ask the local bard to play him some tunes. And lastly, he went to meet with your average crypto trader. Satisfied from his tour of the town, Garfield continues his journey to return from the pits of hell and goes to seek help from Momo. Momo is sad and alone because his internet speed is so awful. He tells Garfield to go place a router on the highest tower so he can finally get a ping below two hours.
With a faster internet connection, Momo is able to log on to Skype and message his friend, who he has not seen in years. Unfortunately, Windows decided to update during the call, Momo is completely devastated. However, now aware that his friend is alive and outside the town, he starts thinking of a plan to go meet him. Unfortunately, the path outside is full of danger. If the pair wish to traverse it, they would require a weapon. Momo sends Garfield to go find a person named Gary, for he might know of a weapon that surpasses Metal Gear. Outside the walls, still haunted by his controversial opinions, an intense chase ensues. Garfield finds Gary sitting by himself, trapped in his home. Because he is too controversial to step outside, he tells Garfield to go plug in his charger. When the charger is plugged in, Gary prepares to showcase his weapon that surpasses Metal Gear. Luckily, this weapon also comes in cat size. How convenient. Armed with a weapon to surpass Metal Gear, Garfield is ready to go face the sewers with Momo. However, their triumphant journey is cut short. Momo chooses to stay behind to hold the door open. Because it would be completely preposterous to assume that you could have just put something between the chains, Momo's sacrifice is definitely necessary for the story. Garfield now finds himself surrounded by the strange creatures, abusing the weapon to save Garfield. John exhausts himself and collapses. Garfield grabs him and runs off faster than ever before. <laughs> Having escaped such a stressful situation, John appears to be completely fine again. However, the weapon to surpass Metal Gear is now destroyed due to negligence use. The pair head upwards towards a place called Midtown, getting closer to the surface. Finally being in an industrialized and developing town full of employment opportunities, Garfield meets with Clementine and decides to engage in conspiracy theories and committing crime. As his first task he shoplifts a worker jacket by distracting the employee with awful music. Later he sneaks into a hat shop to commit robbery. He gives the worker jacket and hat to Blazer, his accomplice in a plan to steal an important battery from a well-trusted company, which employs many and keeps the town running. Having successfully stolen the power source, Garfield runs off to meet with Clementine. However, in an unforeseen chain of events, Garfield ends up being betrayed by Blazer, they are taken into a prison from which Garfield escapes from in the first 10 seconds he is awake. After a not so difficult prison escape, Clementine hijacks a car and drives off almost leaving Garfield behind. Unfortunately, running from the law is not so easy. Clementine sacrifices themselves and buys time so that Garfield can continue his journey with John toward the surface. Using the abandoned underground railway, the pair head off to the control room. In the control room, the truth will be revealed to Garfield. The entire city has been inside a giant dome all this time. Shocked, unraveled, Garfield decides to rush over to the controls, for he would dismantle the controls once and for all, opening the city. However, dismantling the controls forced John to install a software update, which was incompatible with his current version of artificial intelligence. The new update added advertisements into his system, which caused John to effectively die from cringe. Garfield now truly alone, he sits in silence as Skylight fills the town that he became a criminal in mere moments after arrival. Was losing John worth it? Was there anything he could have done differently? Garfield wonders. But as the large doors opened and a light shine at the end of the tunnel, Garfield realized none of that matters. All that matters is that he steps outside, 
takes a deep breath, and finally touches grass.